All right, folks, are you ready? We are actually allowing an investor and entrepreneur to our cameras. Nick Hanauer is actually a lot more than simply a venture capitalist and an entrepreneur. He is somebody who is raising alarm bells everywhere from TED to Davos about the perils of inequality, not to your conscience, although that too, but to your pocketbook and to the sustainability of our world as we know it. Nick Hanna, welcome to the program. Glad Thank to you. have you. Thank you. We have a lot of grassroots <laughs> activists and people who are against people like you, so I, I want to give you a chance to talk. Um, Defend myself. No, no. <laughs> introduce yourself, let's put it that way. Give us a bit of background. Where'd you come from? Uh, um, well, I, I live in Seattle, and I grew up in a family business, and uh, a, a, bed pillow and man, a bed pillow and down comforter manufacturing business, and grew up in that business, still uh, own and help manage that business, but started starting other companies when I was very young, and I'm now a Basically, I'm a technology entrepreneur and venture capitalist. Um, and you and were genius very lucky. to invest in a company yeah, that I was maybe at some very people lucky off called have Amazon. A, yeah, I was very, very early interest in the internet. And as luck would have it, I uh, had a friend who had an early interest in the internet. His name was Jeff Bezos. And so, um, and so I became the first non-family investor in that. And from that experience, made a lot of money, obviously. And from that experience, started starting other internet companies, including a company called Aquantive, which was an internet advertising company. Uh, that you may not have heard of, but we sold to Microsoft in 2007 for six and a half billion dollars, but dozens of others. I mean, I think I've helped with 35 companies. So fair like to that. say you have a lot of money. I do. You could be off, I don't know, vacationing in the Bahamas. Yeah, um, I do that sometimes. <laughs> but you don't only do that. No. You also have an organization called Civic Ventures. Yes. Tell us a bit about the campaign that you've uh, gotten involved in over the last few years. Well, I mean, Civic Ventures is the, my political organization, and we try, uh, you know, our slogan is disruptive innovation in the civic. happened to the economy for good and bad reasons is that it became a service that it became a service economy it was a manufacturing economy with high wage jobs it became a service economy with low wage jobs and what's important for people to recognize is a barista at Starbucks who gets paid $8 an hour isn't less well trained than an What else does it affect? Well, I mean, you know, the best way to understand what's happened is that corporate profits as a percent of GDP 30, 40 years ago were about 6% of GDP. Today, they're 12 to 13% of GDP. GDP is, one, is $17 trillion. So that's a trillion extra dollars mm. in corporate profits. Wages used to be 50 
shareholder capitalism ethic and the legal constructs that, ha that have buttressed that over time are super pernicious and are part of what's killing the economy, killing the middle class, and killing our democracy. And all of that has to shift, and pe but people have to recognize what's happened and start to fight against so it. So how do you shift it in the civic, in the political sphere, in the sense that we're in an election year where you have that typical fight um, between people who talk about fairness, people who talk about growth. And yeah. the growth folks, particularly on the Republican side, said well, the way you get growth is you allow profits to congregate. Yes. You how we solve problems and increase living standards. But in the absence of demand, there is no innovation, right? You can't, you know, it's the sound of one hand clapping. If you have no, no one to make things for, then you, you actually don't have innovation, which is, why, um, which is why wages are so essential to innovators. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the truth is that if, in the near term, some giant corporations make a little bit less at percentage of profits. Over the long term, in aggregate, we'll all make more money, including them, as the size of the economy increases, right? It, it, look, it, if low wages equaled prosperity, then the lowest wage places on earth would be the most prosperous, but they're not. The highest wage places are. Why? Because that's the target rich opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, Apple computer was started here because here is where the most people are to sell to, mm -hmm. right? That's how you can build the scale to build these products. And what right? about your take on the market and how it functions? Is it magic? Does it work efficiently? So market market economies aren't efficient at all. That's that's a misnomer. M market m a market is an evolutionary system, and there's nothing efficient about evolution. But what it is is super effective. Mm -hmm. You know that's what nature is. is an, it's an effective way to solve problems, and a dynamic market economy is mostly an economy of failure with these amazing things that pop out, work, and multiply, right? Apple computer is an example of a thing 
that succeeded yeah. and, and, and flourished. That diversity doesn't hinder growth, it supercharges mm -hmm. it because the more people who approach pro uh, problems differently simultaneously, the faster it is that you get on top of yeah. those problems. And, and so the promise of market uh, economies, if they're well managed, if we deliberately and purposefully include people with wages, education, infrastructure, uh, it provides opportunity for everybody to live up to their potential. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll have some inequality in something like that, but not radical and raging inequality. So what, what, what <coughs> place is there in all of that for, for planning? What do you see as So I don't think that there's any place in a, in a market economy for planning, but I do think there's a place in it for goals. So for instance, you can say to your, so it probably makes no sense to say, our plan is to make that company uh, or that industry the answer to the alternative energy challenge mm -hmm. that we face. But it makes a huge amount of sense to say, we have to find a way to transition from oil to alternatives. Mm -hmm. Here's a zillion dollars in incentives for every kind of alternative idea we can find to explore the possibilities and see what works. So you don't wanna, cho you don't wanna choose winners, but you have to choose games. That's strategy. You've painted in some of your speeches a fairly bleak scenario of what might happen if, if things, the, yeah. we continue on the current course. Yes. Do you still feel that bleak? And what's that scenario? The thing about revolutions is that they come slowly and then suddenly, right? And th so in 1980, the, po the top 1% of Americans shared about 8% of in income, and the bottom 50% of Americans shared about 18% of income today. The top 1% of Americans share about 22, 23, 24% of them income. The bottom 50% of Americans now share about 12 or 11. So 300% increase, 50% decrease. Um, uh, at current course and speed, if you simply just assume that it will continue on, in, in, on that path in another 30 years, uh, the top 1% of Americans will share about 35, 40% of income and the bottom about five or six. And it is impossible, it, I think it's just unrealistic to expect that that will unfold and not result in riots and revolution. I, I, just, I just don't think the 95% of Americans who will be savaged by that trend are gonna be like, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. I think, they'll, I think they will go crazy. And look, the Republican primary is a sign of how crazy people are already becoming. Yeah. And uh, I think that that eventuality will be horrible for everybody, but particularly for people like me, <laughs> because people are gonna be angry and they're gonna look to blame people, and that is just something that we wanna avoid. Nick, thank you so much. Great to Super have nice you. Super nice to really be here. Thank to you. Talk with you.